Hello, it's James from X-Robots. It's part 23 of the real working exosuit. So I had quite a lot of success last time walking and putting sensors on so it knows when I'm pulling forward of the hips and it knows to walk forward. So check out that video if you didn't see it. There were some problems actually publishing that video. It didn't go public on YouTube for some reason for a few hours. So I think some people might have missed it. So don't forget to check that video out. Today, we're gonna to talk about the design for putting some arms on, which will hopefully make the suit of some practical use. So before we build anything, we really need to talk about what practical use this suit is. Obviously, there's probably more practical ways of lifting something. It's definitely not gonna make me fast, but the legs are pretty strong. This suit's pretty heavy. I can just about lift it with two hands, but actually, um, it does support itself. So it will support my own weight if I push up on it here. So uh, the legs are actually pretty strong and that means we can actually put some arms on and use it for lifting something. The other issue of course is that I can't crouch down very much. The ball screws I use for the leg mechanism here are pretty short, um, I think they're 200 or 250 mil and that means the legs can't actually bend that far to crouch down uh, but it's good enough for walking. But of course the control does work to actually move the legs and if the ball screws were longer then I would be to crouch down more and then it would be of more practical use. Both the upper and the lower of my legs are based on these parallelograms and that means I only need two motors, one in the bottom and one in the top, instead of a separate hip, knee and ankle motor. So that reduces the motor count and makes it always stay upright but it does mean I can't lean the hips forward independently from the rest of the leg. So essentially the hip here, this pole always has to stay upright and this always stays level, which is quite good because it makes it easy to control. It does mean I can't lean forward at the waist. So I'm gonna try and come up with some innovative solution for the arms that means there is some use, even though I can't bend right down like this to pick anything up. What we really need is the ability to be able to reach forward. So wherever the shoulder attachment point is, probably should go with my shoulders and be able to float rather than being fixed right back on the back of the suit. So when I started the build of the Mark II suit, I put together this crude CAD diagram so we could see roughly what was going on. Obviously we've got those parallel leg joints and all of those things. And at the time I'd vaguely discussed the arms and this was kind of gonna be the plan, which is to have these big supports and have the shoulder mechanisms there roughly floating over my shoulders. And that would have given me quite a lot of reach uh, with some sort of arms longer than my arms. Of course, my shoulders only come up to this sort of point and um, then push the wrists around and have all of these joints motorized. However, I think that looks a bit silly. I quite like something that's sort of more sleek and attached to my arms, a bit more like the Edge of Tomorrow exosuits. So we're gonna do something quite different. So the plan I've come up with is to put arms that are pretty much attached to these uprights somewhere, but I want that shoulder to be able to move forward. So I'm actually gonna put the pivot point right at the bottom and have an extra piece that can pivot out, which is basically where the shoulder is mounted on the other end. So then my upper arm will be mounted here. So I can do this sort of thing. And then of course my elbow is here and that gives me my elbow. And whether these pieces are longer and my uh, actual hand comes halfway up the forearm with a big gripping hand on or something I don't know yet but for now we're going to try and work on this mechanism and somehow mount that so of course it can rotate round as well. Now it's a bit of an issue because of this piece which holds everything parallel so we're probably going to have to start further out so we can get some rotation round like that. Obviously it'll be easier to come wider. I'd really like to reuse some of the gearboxes I made for the Exosuit Mark 1 which did operate the legs and these had brushless inrunners that go really quick but they can ramp up in speed much quicker and then they're reduced with these gears. And we had this pulley pulling some paracord and that in turn pulled blocks and tackles which geared it down effectively even further and those could lift quite a lot of load. So I've got some of these still, all of the gears. We might make the actual gearbox size a bit smaller but I really like to use these motors and the gears and that similar arrangement for pulling the arms. I think what I quite like though is to make it sort of compliant. So basically that I can move the arms without the motors running and then I can activate something somehow either with some triggers or some other controls that basically then pull those tendons up and actually give me some force to move something with the force of the motors. So here's my design for that initial arm base pivot. So these big holes go around the stainless steel tube and I split that part in two so that it can be attached around the existing tube. It'll be screwed on and probably glued as well to make it nice and strong. And then we've got the other pivot point which will be mounted on bearings and that'll be there for that base of the arm. And then the part goes up to the top of the shoulder here. So the gray parts are 3D printed, which is how I've made most of the mechanical parts on the suit, all the red parts. And the green pieces here are 2020 extrusion, which will be bolted on, that's made of aluminium. And that means we can mount the gearbox on the back, run our blocks and tackles up the back, hopefully, and then put a pulley at the top that pulls to the top of the shoulder that will be over here somewhere.
So here are my left and right parts for each arm with their other parts that go round that tube. So these are all more Struder prints on the Lowell's but more Struder with its 1.2mm nozzle, so they're pretty tough parts. And um, that's basically the same as the other parts in the suit that support my weight if I lift myself up on it. So pretty sure those will be fine, at least for development and testing. So as usual, I'm using T-nuts on bolts there, which go into the slot of the 2020 extrusion to hold this whole thing together. So for the bearings, we've got these little inserts. So these pieces were made with a more extruder. This was made with a normal extruder with a half mil nozzle on. So that means I can print that very accurately and I don't have to print it a lot of times to get the tolerances correct to fit the bearing. And I've uh, done a few of these and this fits pretty well now. So it's a good push fit. And then this should fit right in there. Okay, so those are my left and right for the arm. We've got those pieces that fit on there, so we can put those around the tubes and make that hinge point that pivots around. So that's looking pretty good. And I've got my pivot points for the base of the arm. So now we need a piece that goes in here, and pivots up to the top of the shoulder. And the next part looks like this, which is these red and green parts. Again, we've got 20-20 extrusion, some pivot points at the top and the bottom. Obviously these have eight more holes in to take the studding that goes through those bearings and it will be bolted through both the red parts at the top and the bottom to make it extra rigid, as well as having this plate on. There may be a plate on the back and the front. We'll see how that goes. So we'll get those printed and add them on, and then that gives us our shoulder point at the top. Right, here they are. So each of those is attached to a piece of 2020. Obviously, we've got those T-nuts again, which attach the aluminium to the plastic parts. Right, so I've just loosely fitted one side here. So we've got only one of these uh, things on here to make it rotate, but those will be fixed on in the ends. And our two arm pieces, which aren't fixed on properly at all. So this makes the top of the shoulder here. So my arm comes down this way. So we need to make a shoulder thing before I can fix these together because it goes in the middle of those. And again, that piece will have bearings and that will come down to make my elbow and that's the rest of the arm. And that allows me to lean forward and also lean the arm out like so. Right, so here's some more pieces. So we've got a big chunk here that takes two bits of 2020. It's got another piece screwed on the back there so we can get those bearings again inserted in those inserts to get the correct spacing. And that makes the top of the shoulder joint. Yes, we finally fitted the shoulders which are here now. So those are gonna have their 2020 in to make the upper arms. Obviously they can lean forward as I lean forward. They also of course bend outwards or inwards. So we can put the arm on there. So now we can actually start on the arms. Great, so we can do the upper arms. Really, it's only the elbow joint next, and that will give us the uh, joint there to the forearms. And these will be the last parts for today, which are the elbow joints. So we've got these parts here. What I've done is sandwiched the 2020 in between two plates, and the plates, of course, have the bearing inserts again. And we'll have that eight mil studding actually bolted to the piece that's bolted to the 2020 on the upper arm. So that should make that joint nice and rigid. There is a possibility, of course, to run some extra studding like I did with the legs, perhaps between these joints on the outside to give it some extra rigidity. But we'll see how that goes once we've got the motors on next time. So let's get those printed and assembled and then we should have our complete arms. Right, here are all the pieces. I've already inserted my bearings in those bearing inserts and we've got the pieces there for the right and left arm. So let's get those assembled. So that's my elbow joint on and obviously the shoulder's up here. So now I can lean forward when I pull forward to pull the shoulder forward. And here's the lower arm, which of course has got the bearings fitted in either side there and the actual forearm piece is offset. So that means I can put it more on the inside or more on the outside to give me more clearance for my arm. There's going to be something big attached where the gripper is. Obviously that will go on there to make the elbow. So I'm going to attach that and then we'll see how much motion I can get out of it. I've just put this bungee cord on for now here, which holds the top of the shoulder. Eventually the motor, of course, will be on the back with a big pulley pulling it, which will stop it falling forward. But otherwise, at the moment, it falls forward. But now we've just got this bungee and that just allows that shoulder to return. I will, of course, eventually have something to hold on to with this hand as well. And then there'll be a big gripper or an actuator on the front there so I can actually do stuff. For now, I just have to hold these with my, my hands. So if I just grab the other one, we can see that I've got quite a range of motion where I can pull those shoulders forward and I can move them all around and I can sort of reach in quite a few places. So with a bit of power assist to pull them back, I should be able to lift some load, hopefully.
Right, so that's the end of this video. Next time, we're going to be putting gearboxes in the arm. And I'm not sure whether I can get away with one gearbox and one pulley system per arm, or whether we need two. I'll be thinking about that next time. So don't forget to check back for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also, it's really important to say that all my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots, and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me and all my videos early. All right, that's all for now.